What's up guys, I'm Brad White, Arclife Fab on Instagram, brand ambassador for Everlast Welders, and today we're gonna talk about lay wire technique, pedal versus machine pulse. So for the basic lay wire technique is the tack is here, and these are just fusion tacks. To go in right here, right at the edge of that tack, I set the filler right up against there, and when I start my initiate my arc, it's gonna start right on the edge of that, that gap between the filler and the tack, so it kind of creates that next dime. As it goes in, I kind of back step just a hair, so that way it catches that overlap and then go in. Once the puddle cools and it gets that bright silvery that we all love, then I'll back off the pedal like 40%, to let it go in and then move forward to where it's your next lap or dime. And then as I'm going, I'm filling the puddle up, but going over the cold wire to start the next dime or next lap. Forward spacing depends on your filler size and your actual material thickness. So, you know, do you like that basic half overlap dime? to get your you know your beautiful profile and all that's where it's going to be so your spacing does depend on your material thickness so say this is 16 gauge i'm going to go forward uh probably about an eighth of an inch because you want that pool fill to come in and i mean you know you could kind of set your distance as you go by how much you push into the filler if you just happen to have thicker material and only 045 wire, 16th wire, you can fill that space by adding more to the pool. As you can tell, I was running a little bit hot, so I backed off and you can see the little bit of a colder lap coming in as I'm pushing in the filler, as it's going in, each time that the heat is gone, I'm just adding just a little bit more filler to come in and keep the uniformity going in. And of course, when you run over a tack, it kind of hits that rough spot. And I should have added more filler there. The tack that was right here, as you can see, I added more filler to it and it came in. But as you carry over, it gets more heat. So this section here, between here, is about 100% backing off to 50%. This section here is 100% backing off like maybe 10 or 15%. And then this section here is about 90 to 95% backing off to 20 to 30%. You can kind of see the difference in your heat carryover and your input and as it's going along to how you can change it very slightly by just a manual pedal. So with lay wire, the main difference between lay wire and dabbing is you're actually keeping the wire actively on the metal, the material, your base material, but you are dabbing it or pushing it into your puddle as you're going. You're just using the actual wire that's there to control your heat input into the metal. And as you go, you're still filling it into as you're moving along. It's not just you're going over it. All right, so as you can see, that was manual pulse uh, with a pedal. Not my preferred technique. I have an EXT series, so I am spoiled to mechanical pulse or machine pulse. Let me show you all how that's done. Here we have the 210 EXT switching over to pulse function. The TIG pulse is right here. You go over to standard AC DC pulse, still standing in DC. I go up five amps just to carry on that a little bit extra my pulse time on i'm going to be around 55 percent 55 percent is actually your time on uh, out of out of 100 percent. so with 55 percent of the pulse is you're on your full amperage of 55 amps that allows me enough time to where i feel like with 1.6 hertz or 1.6 seconds however you want to take it that i have enough time to get the filler into the puddle correctly it can adjust. Some days I go 60%, some days I go 50%. It's just a matter of how I'm moving that day or, you know, how much coffee I've had. Ants, 25, pulse frequency, 1.6. 1.6 hertz to me, as you travel along, it evens out the heat enough to where I'm not overheating that section of the plate to eliminate, help eliminate warpage. So that way I'm using heat input and my travel speed to control my heat input into stainless. When I'm going into showing this demonstration, I'm gonna show you a few different torch angles and how they relate to the pulse as you move along or manual pulse as you move along. 
Similar to the manual pulse though, I still start the lay wire right at the edge of the tack, giving me that that's where I'm, my burning point is gonna be coming into it. And as the power is on the machine mechanically, I'm still pushing in filler each time to get that beautiful dime look we all love. Starting off the initiation, come in here with a fill. As each time the heat is coming in, I'm pushing in filler just that ever so slight bit to get that even fill coming across here. Changing torch angles just to show angling in a little bit more doesn't necessarily work on a lap joint. And still doing the fill, basically the filler balls up in too much in front of it and you can see how it goes. But then going back to the normal torch angle, you get that nice uniform fill as it goes across and still pushing in each time as it goes forward. And stepping forward with each pulse, just ever so slightly. The machine pulse is far more uniform, so it gives a better profile. You're reacting to a machine doing it versus you're reacting to your reactions, which is slower. So the machine forces you to be more uniform and more regular in what you're doing. Essentially, it's like making music with a metronome or a click. You know, you're on beat because you hear that beat and as you're welding, you see it and you're like, oh crap, I have to react to this right now or I miss my window and I have to cut this and redo it. So therefore the machine is basically training you to be better. All right, going back and looking what I did with the pulse it's coming in, as you can see, it started out pretty decent, coming on real decent uniformity. And as I moved forward, my torch angle changed a little slightly and it became a little bit colder into this portion still going in still moving right along coming in I, going across the tack I forgot to backfill going in so and it's still pretty uniform profile as it goes along versus the manual so here they are side by side manual pulse machine pulse you can see the difference in just the coloring and the has zones as they go along. Uh, manual pulse being a lot greater because it's a human reacting to a human's motion versus a, a human reacting to a machine's motion and you're counter correcting, so to speak. Uh, basically, as you can see, the manual pulse is not as consistent as the machine pulse as you move along. Y'all have a great day. Weld mean, weld green.